grinding going on. But is it the front brakes or the back? Hard to tell. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we're going to be working on a Green Hornet WJ. We're going to replace these crappy Thieves style calipers with these remanufactured Akebono style calipers. All right guys, here we go. We are going to do a WJ brake swap from the Thieves style calipers to the Akebono style calipers. You can see right there. Jeep had these versions of the calipers from 99 to 2002. These aren't as good. I don't want to get into it, but they warp rotors. <laughs> these aren't great brakes. So what they did was they got these brakes, these new calipers, new style Akebono calipers on, and some 2002s, but mostly 2003s and 2004s. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert over to the good style calipers. A lot of reasons why you want to do this. One, better stopping power. Two, they don't warp rotors as much. And three, if you have some loose steering components, warp rotors can trigger a death wobble. So when I got this WJ a little over a year ago, I basically replaced every component on this thing inside and out. What I didn't do yet was the brake, so now it's time. I figured I might as well just upgrade to the Akebono style instead of replacing Teeves components. So what you will need to do to replace that is, of course, you gotta get left and right Akebono calipers. You're gonna need the brake pads, specifically for the Akebono. Just ask for 0304 caliper parts. You'll get the brake pads those calipers and of course rotors. Rotors are the same for all of the years of the WJ, so there's no need to specify which Akebono or Teves you have. But here we go, that's it. That's all you're gonna need to do this conversion. Right now what we did was we already jacked up the vehicle, so quick safety check. We got our tire underneath, we took that off with the big dog DeWalt. And again, we got the blocks underneath for safety. We got the little chucks. Front and back, of course, e-brake on. I think the e-brake is shot. We'll have to do the rear brakes too. But for now, we're just gonna do the front brakes. Let's see how much this costs. Got the receipt right here. So we got the brake pads, they are MKD945 door last pads. We got a rotor, we got the 5118 rotor, two of those left and right, they're the same. And we got the calipers, we got the caliper number 18B4826 and 18B4827. Those are the left and right calipers coming in at $67.99 each. And of course, they banged us the core charge. $25 each for a whopping $334.02. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to do the front brakes first, and then what we're going to do is return the cord so we can afford our back brakes. All right, guys, we're going to open up our brake fluid reservoir, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to top off the brake fluid because once I crack open that brake caliper and take off that banjo bolt, we're going to start oozing brake fluid. So I'm gonna top this off because I don't want this ever to get too low where it gets air bubbles in the system. So I cracked that, topped it off. And when you open up brake fluid, it's important to note the date. I had opened this on April, April 1st of 21 to do the Grievous brakes. Brake fluid is hygroscopic. That means it attracts water to it. Now, this is not compressible. This fluid doesn't compress. Uh, water does. So if water soaks into this brake fluid over time, you will ruin the fluid. You'll have a bad brake system. This stuff is it's not good after a year. So make sure you mind the date once you pop it open. Again, I got some life left in this. It's only four months old. So I'll be using what's left of this when I bleed the brakes. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap back on. This way there's more of a vacuum in the system. I don't want all the brake fluid to drip all over the floor. I'll take this cap off when I want it to flow back into the new caliper. So let's get started. Time to remove our banjo bolt. We're gonna get this off with a 15 millimeter. Got myself a bucket to catch the spillage. And uh, I'm gonna try to put all the brake fluid in this container over here. I think that's a Chick-fil-A iced tea container. <laughs> That good old unsweetened tea is delicious. Maybe it was the lemonade. I don't know. Both delicious. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Opening up the banjo bolt. As you can see, the brake fluid is already dripping. There we go. 
contain that liquid in there. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is remove these little caps here. These are guarding the brake bolts, which is kind of cool. Keep that nice and clean, I like that. So remove the cap, and then in here is a seven millimeter, it's a little hex head bolt. And we're gonna go in, there we go. Pop that off. There's also one down here on the bottom. There it goes. There we go. Once these seven millimeter bolts are removed, just pop off these clips, slide the caliper right off. Now we can drain the rest of this brake fluid out of this big old dual piston caliper. And we'll box them. After you box them, you ship them. After you box them, you ship them. Lots of luck, smartass. Once the caliper is off and boxed, we go ahead and take off these mounting brackets with these two 18 millimeter bolts. Oh yeah, she's on there. Ugh. There we go. So the head of this ratchet was hitting this ABS line, so what I did was I switched over to a deep dish socket. Now the head is out of the way. I'll be able to turn this one. Oh man, baby's on tight. There we go. All right. Once you crack it, you can basically loosen it by hand. See now the bracket's nice and wiggly. Easy peasy. There's one. Two. There we go. All right, off camera, I just popped in a new cotter pin. This hub area looked really rusty. I'm thinking maybe hubs and axles in a new video. So uh, we got this going. This is still dripping. So what I'm going to do right now is just top off this fluid. Again, don't want it to get too low. It's been steady drip drop dripping for about 15 minutes. So we'll go ahead and top this off. There we go. Let it drip some more. Kind of like a nice brake flush. <laughs> All right, let's prepare the new caliper to be put on. Here's a look at the Teves style calipers compared to the Akebono style of calipers. These, when they're new, they usually come black. I found a nice new set of these in the junkyard the other day. Now, usually when it's time to address your brakes, they're just going to be all rusted like this. So the best way to tell the difference between these two at a quick glance is this little clip. We don't want ones with this clip. We're going to want ones with this full framed bracket on these Akebono calipers. So these are normally gray from the store. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and remove this nice new bandle bolt and we're gonna fill this sucker up with some nice fresh brake fluid. We're no longer gonna need this seven millimeter, not for this side anyways, for the driver's side we will. We're gonna go ahead and change to this 17 millimeter. This is gonna take off the bracket from the caliper. There we go gonna go ahead and put on this bracket right now put on some anti-seize up here this way the calipers won't stick in the future oh I just globbed anti-seize all over myself gross all right new rotors now the rotors won't stick to the hub slide this on very nice now we're gonna go put on our caliper bracket all right so we're gonna reuse our original mounting hardware just gonna slide this on right here. Sorry if you can't see it guys, but it's pretty simple. Just line up the holes from the existing knuckle. The existing knuckle, the only knuckle. And you go ahead and, come on baby. Work it in the hole. Go ahead and crank this sucker down with the 18 millimeter deep dish. snug up the top and we'll snug up the bottom and then we'll really crank them down both together once they are I guess squared up with one another you want to make sure you snug them down at the same time so get them on there get them on there and then you can go ahead and crank them go. Ah, yeah 
gonna want clean rotors, so brake part cleaner. Get all the finger oils and hand grease off your rotor. Front and back. You want this bad boy squeaky clean. All right, now we can put on these little brake pad clips, these little slidey things. Gives it a nice smooth surface for the brake pads to slide on. Go ahead and apply a little bit of grease right here and here. Again, don't get your rotor. Same applies to the back, <laughs> applies literally. And these little clippies, they only go one way. You just want to line them up to how they go. Can't really mess that up. Very simple. And they just snap in. Now if you go ahead and pop on our brake pads, they slide into the clips. Very easy, very nice. And if you take a look, compare them to the old brake pads, these, the new ones, the Akabono ones, they're more, um, I guess, rectangular, if you will. And the Teves, they're more um, trapezoidal. I don't know, a, a rhombus. <laughs> so, yeah, they, uh, they look like they got big wings, like kind of like some demented uh, TIE fighter, I don't know, Star Wars stuff. <laughs> Nerd alert, but yeah. <laughs> Lock in nice right there. Cool. Perfect. There we go. Brake pads are in. And then what you could do is put the squeal indicator on. These go ahead and clamp on the brake pad. And then it grinds against the rotor when the pads are getting low. How about we just uh, check maintenance regularly and not use those. All right. Now let's go ahead and put on the caliper. We'll add a little juice to that. A little baby funnel in here. Go ahead and pour a little bit of brake fluid in. Wipe this down. Brake fluid. It's very corrosive. It'll destroy any paint. I guess I could have just went ahead and popped off the bleeder, but that's what bleeding the brakes are for. Oh well. Let's get this puppy on. Wow, it's hot. Burning my hand. We just slid on the caliper and then slid in our new 17 millimeter bolts, top and bottom. Gotta make sure they line up. And give them a wiggle and give them a turn so they don't cross thread them. And we can go ahead and crank them down with the 17 millimeter. Now we'll go ahead and reattach our banjo bolt. Take this baby out of the tub. Here's a little side note. Actually, this is kind of important. Before you go ahead and attach the brake line to your new caliper with your new banjo bolt and crush washers, you're gonna wanna make sure you've accounted for both your old crush washers. Now, sometimes they'll stick to this brake line over here, or they could stick right here to the old caliper. That's okay if they do that. But if they stick to this guy, Right here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up sandwiching on your new crush washers to the old crush washers, and that could give you a brake fluid leak. So make sure you pop both of these off, and this way you know you will have no obstructions putting the new ones on. Line up our first brand new crush washer. That's why I love these AutoZone kits. Got everything you need. New crush washers, new banjo bolts, everything good to go. And I'm just feeling for that hole right there because I can't see it. Oh, where'd you go? Come on, baby. There it is. And now we can finish her off with a 15 millimeter. And not too tight, guys. Just a little bit of torque. Now we'll go ahead and crush that copper right into place. There we go. That feels about right. Ta-da, done. Oh man, this is Scorcher out, whew. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the driver's side now. The rest will be uh, fast motion. And then, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, get our core charge back. Yeah.
going to start bleeding the brakes, but we got to make sure this is topped off first. There we go. So this is my setup. I got my wrench on the bleeder valve. I got my little quarter inch tube hooked up and it's getting dumped right into this jug once again. Now, in accordance with the rules of brake bleeding, we're going to start at the caliper that is furthest from the master cylinder. So this is going to be the passenger side rear. What we're going to do is have a lovely assistant pump the brakes. Then we're going to go ahead and open this, let the air out, close it. And then she's going to release the brakes. And then we're going to do this all over again, maybe about 10 times, until we get all the air bubbles out and some fresh fluid in this caliper. And then, of course, we're going to go to the driver's side rear. Then we're going to go to the passenger side front. And then, of course, the front driver's side. All right, lovely assistant. Pump it a couple times and then apply steady pressure, holding it down. Let me know when you're holding it down. Down? Okay. There we go. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And release. Okay, pump it up again and then hold it again. And pump it up and hold. This one had a little cap. Put our cap back on our bleeder. Now to the front. Gonna check our levels. All right, pump it again and hold. Hey, more air bubbles. All right, pump it again and hold. All right, I think that is good. Now we're gonna fill up our reservoir just where it says max. Right about there. You can see it. That's where we want to be. So we bled out just enough fluid. Perfect fit. <laughs> there we go. Nice. So I used just about this whole thing, except for what I used for uh, the Grievous a couple months ago. That's going to do it. All right, guys, here we go. We are pulling out. Time to test these brakes. I'm coming out of the driveway. The brake pedal felt nice and tight. Gave it a few pumps. Nice and firm. I like it. So here we go. Just cruising down the road. Coming to our first stop sign. Okay. <laughs> There's that grind again. So it was definitely coming from the rear passenger side. Oh my goodness, it is loud and clear. Hear it now more than ever. Oh boy. Well, I guess we're just gonna return the core charge for the front calipers. Then we could go ahead and buy some rear brakes and then we'll do the rear brakes in another video. So I guess that's it guys. Like the front brakes, rear brakes coming soon. Man, it is a scorcher. I'll see you guys on the next project. So remember to like, subscribe. See you on the next project, and peace.